Hi. Unfortunately, um, this Fluke 3000 FC multimeter has a problem. Um, it doesn't switch on because, well, uh, let's take the back off. Uh, uh, wah, 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 wah. Look at that. Um, not Duracells for once. <laughs> We've got ourselves energizers. Oh, so the magic alkaline has escaped. It's all crystalline. And oh, I'll put a video, a link in a video up here where I actually caught one. Rare. I actually caught one in the act of actually leaking its liquid out, spewing its guts everywhere before it had time to crystalline. Um, and yeah, normally you see this with Duracells, but eh, it happens to energizers too. So. Um, yeah, we have a problem. Uh, isn't this sad? I am shooting this in four glorious 4K resolution for you leakage aficionados because I know the leakage aficionados like their leakage porn in 4K resolution. So anyway, let's get this out. See how far the damage has gone. Um, and it's on the back of the... You get it on the back of the uh, case as well. That's pretty easy to clean up and... Has it? I don't see it gotten down into the PCB down in there, which is good. It's on some of the, it's on that contact there. That's not good. Um, so, yeah, I don't know how long it's been in this state, but don't let that be a lesson to you. Don't leave batteries in multimeters, especially when you've got a metric crap ton of multimeters like I do. So, oh, oh, look at that. Wow, is that a, that's a bit of plastic. Um, that, that's, that's a bit of plastic. Okay. Where'd that come from? I'm not... Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, look. A bit of plastic came off there. I think it came from there. Wow. Did it, how does it eat away the plastic? I guess that's possible, but... Anyway, we're going to have to get in here and clean her up. So first thing, um, you can use, like, some people use lemon juice, um, a bit uh, white vinegar. You need, like, a mild acid like this, so we get some white vinegar and a cotton bud and we'll just get in there and give that a wiper dipe and that will prevent any further, hopefully any further degradation in the metal. This actually seems pretty good. It's certainly salvageable. Uh, I'm getting there now with the, oh, Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, look, it's eating away the top of the plastic there. That's not good, I was going to say. Get in there with the stiff bristled brush. Um, yeah, it's not terrific, is it? Then we'll get in there with some 100% isopropyl and we'll just flood that sucker. And, uh, and get in there and start brushing and try and get the... Try and get the remaining gunk out of there. Good thing about the isopropyl is you don't have to worry if it gets down into your board or anything. It's just going to evaporate. No wackers, but uh, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, look, it's broken off down in there as well. Um, jeez, that's not terrific. There you go. Poor fluke. There's the large chunk. Um, it, like, it attacks plastic. Usually doesn't. I found it usually doesn't do that. So it usually only attacks the, usually only attacks the metal. Ugh, yuck. Anyway, a bit more cleaning and uh, that, I reckon, is, that is salvageable. Nah, she'll be right. Still got the protection sticker on it. I mean, come on. Now, if we can, it's worth removing, yep, yeah, I thought so. Worth removing that so we can give that a complete and thorough clean. And also get any remaining gunk out of there as well. But unfortunately you can't do that with the ones, well, down on the board. You could take it apart and you can get access to the board down in there. But I don't think that one's been affected at all. We can get this one out too because it might have gunk down the back of it. Yeah, there's actually a fair bit of gunk down in there. So you definitely want to clean that out and stop any more rot. So let's take this off and... Whoop. Have a squiz. Oh, look at that. Whoa. Didn't look. Look at the back of that one. It's all black. Whoa. Is it supposed to look like that? 
Oh, unfortunately. Yeah, I'm glad I took that back off. That's terrible, Muriel. That's I think that's eaten into some tracks too. Rip. The the fluke. Oh yeah, look. Look. Oh, they're eating away. Oh no. Oh, the horror. Oh, don't know what to make of it. Um might have to get this under the Tagano microscope and and have a squeeze cuz I reckon that's gotten into the tracks. Oh no. See, it just seeped in through that little gap. It didn't look that bad at all from the outside. Oh, the absolute horror. Oh, oh no. Rip. Rip the fluke. <laughs> this is not good. Let's have a look down here. Look, that's that's interesting. That looks almost like it's got a... almost. Oh, okay, so that's got some liquid on it. Maybe that came down because I haven't put anything on this yet. It wouldn't be the actual battery leakage because it, it crystallines pretty quick. But uh, anyway, oh yeah, look at that. That's crusty as. That does not look good at all. Wow, what? What the heck? What? Look at that. Is that something like like the plastic? That's that that's the plastic, right? So it's attacked the fluke plastic. It's attacked the fluke yellow. It really likes the fluke yellow. Um. <laughs> oh. Hopefully, yeah, that's, I think that's gotten down into, yeah, that, that looks, yeah, yep, yeah, that looks corroded away. And the, and the two resistors down there, they've copped it. Like, yeah, that, that via looks corroded, doesn't it? Look at them. Oh, no. No. <laughs> anyway, all right. Let's, um, let's spray some isopropyl on here. So, 100% isoprop. And... And get a better look at, I mean, oh, that's, it's almost stuck on there. The yellow plastic. Wow. That's unbelievable. Let's get the stiff brush, even with the stiff brush. It is eaten through the solder mask. Wow. I don't think I've ever seen that. Leave it in the comments down below. Have you seen it eat through the solder mask? What the hell are they putting in these Energizer batteries? Like, I've seen it, like, corrode. Like, you've seen videos before when I've done, like, retro teardowns and old school batteries um, leak and stuff. Of course, you know, like, all alkaline batteries aren't the same. Um, like, they have, like, secret squirrel, uh, secret sauce in them. Um, so they might, you know, they might vary slightly, you know, their basic principle is still the same as all alkaline batteries, but, oh no, no, that looked really good from the outside, all those components at the top look really good, so they've survived, no wackers, um, yeah, that's just bare copper, because these, you know, traces, this is like SMOBC, this is solder mask over bare copper, once you, once you remove the solder mask, you've got access to, to the bare copper, and uh, it, it looks like I don't see any ha actually haven't been eaten away though. So sorry, this um, this microscope is not in 4K like my camera was. So you're seeing this upscaled. Oh look at that! Is that a potential eat through there? Oh no no no, it's not no. It's just a bit of bit of stuff. Whatever the heck that is hasn't hasn't eaten away the traces. Hasn't had long enough. I think, uh, oh, that one. Oh, oh, look. Oh, the poor resistor. Oh, the top of it's come off. <laughs> All the electrons have fallen out. <laughs> poor resistor. Oh, sorry. It was, I don't think it was in 100% in focus there. There you go. Look, it's just come off. It's just come off. I wonder if we can measure those. Oh, wow. Look at that. There you go. You wanted to see what's under the epoxy, the top epoxy cap on a resistor? There you have it. <laughs> oh, wow. That's terrible, Muriel. Okay, unfortunately, my uh, National Instruments um, on-screen um, scope has failed. Initialization error. Don't know. I've tried to turn it off and on again. Doesn't work. I'm going to have to use a regular Joe Bloggs multimeter here off-screen. Sorry about that. But, uh, that's 100, and I'm measuring 111K. Don't know what I'm supposed to measure. 
121k, you know, it's like, I don't know, you know, it's 147k the other way, that one's 300, and that's 3 meg and climbing, whatever, like, I, I don't know. So you can see the uh, block in there, you can see the resistive block. It's really interesting, isn't it? That's deposited on the, like, the uh, ceramic base of it. And you can almost see the trace coming off the one side there as well. So if you were to do this properly, you would try and get the service manual, get the value for those two parts, you'd definitely, uh, definitely replace them as a matter of course. Um, I don't know what you do about the traces, you know. You can, all you can do is stop the stop the rot and then either like conform or coat it or get some um, you know UV curable um, solder mask you can get liquid solder mask and you can uh, cure it I don't think I've got some somewhere no I don't have any here got anyway but yeah that's because you wouldn't leave the bear <laughs> you wouldn't leave the bear copper like that um, the poor thing but geez it's not good is it anyway let that be a lesson to you do not leave batteries in your multimeters. I'm going to have to systematically go through all my meters now. Yeah, there's there, there's the solder mask. Okay, so it hasn't hasn't all come off yet. There you go. It's it's on my finger now. Yep. So I got to get in there with some paper towel or something and lift it all up. Well, I've got to say that's a first sponging up solder mask. Um, <laughs> come on, really? Wow. Gone up in there too. Starting to look pretty good now. You would have to protect this. I do have a uh, conformal coat spray. Well, what I'm going to have to do is at least um, power this back up and uh, go through some basic functional tests. I mean, like you don't need to check for calibration and stuff like that. Just you know, basic all the all the functions. Check that they all still work. I think they will. I mean, I don't see how it's eaten through any of those traces. So. Really, the only concern here is like long term. Like, has it. Is that one? Is that being eaten away there? Is that under the solder mask there? What's the issue there? And you can see it's almost made it to the main MSP micro over here. Look at that. Got to clean that up better. There's lots of fiber on there from my. Um, I should use better than just a um, <laughs> paper towel. Should use like a lint, you know, a lint-free uh, wiping cloth or whatever. But anyway, and that via there is black as. Look at that. Look at that sucker. I mean, like what? <laughs> and has it gotten through? Like, has it leaked through down through the other side of the board as well? I might have to take the whole thing apart. Hope you get the idea of what uh, damage can be done leaking alkaline batteries. They're absolutely horrible. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to go systematically. I thought I had at one point systematically checked all my multiple boxes and multimeters and removed uh, the batteries from them. Um, yeah. Oh, God. It pays to use, like, zinc carbon jobbies or old school zinc carbons or uh, nickel metal, um, you know, rechargeable ones or something. But they can leak, too. Everything can leak. Like, <laughs> alkalines, yep, yep. And those Duracells. And it's this one here that's done the business. So it made in the USA, USA, USA. Not for retail trade, because these are proper industrial ones. Um, <laughs> 2024 expiry date. So yeah, here you go, gotcha. Um, energizers, Duracells, Duracells seem to do it a lot more than energizers, but the energizers do it too. Many other brands do it, and for those who ask, no, my alkaline battery leakage test, not a single one failed. I checked in the bunker a while ago, I still got them down there in the tubs that I was storing them in. Nah, nah, <laughs> not a single one has leaked. It's the white coat syndrome. So, yeah, that was, uh, that was an epic fail, that test. I obviously, um, uh, just the conditions that I discharged them under weren't, um, weren't any good at all. Look at that, look at that. Oh, a few leakage aficionados, beautiful, won't even charge you for it. So this poor Fluke 3000, it, it may survive, but um, I, I don't know, <laughs> highest bidder, anyone? <laughs> I'll, start, I'll start the bidding at a dollar, <laughs> who wants it?
It's a bargain. Well, I found the rest of the solder mask. <laughs> it's on the bottom of the case here. Oh, come on. Seriously? <laughs> so, yeah. That's so... Oh, wow. Have you, I've never seen that. Hands up. Leave it in the comments down below if you've seen the solder mask come off a board like... Like, I've seen it get through solder masks, but I haven't seen, like, the solder mask just... Like completely get eat. I don't think I have. Maybe in other videos. I don't know. My memory's a bit rusty, but certainly not to that extent. And check it out. Yeah, like it's starting to eat away the plastic. Starting to eat away the fluke plastic. I got a yellow pointer on a yellow, <laughs> yellow fluke case. Yeah, it's and it's almost as if it's is that is that cracking as well? Is that like a giant, giant crack? Once again, I don't think I've seen. An alkaline battery leak that's eaten away the plastic before. Is there something particular with the Fluke plastics? Don't know. If you've got any idea, if you've seen it before, leave it in the comments. Now, I put some batteries in it, and I get a flishy flashy on there. And wah, 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 wah. It's dead. Wrapped in plastic. So there you go. It's a bit disappointing. Oh, we've killed this... <laughs> Perfectly good, otherwise almost pr practically brand spanking new Fluke 3000 FC. Um, it's uh, still hasn't look, it's still got the protective film on the front. So let me know what you want me to do with this thing. Should I, um, <laughs> should I just auction it off on eBay, starting at a dollar ninety nine cent, or should I try and repair the thing? I don't, don't know if it's worth my time and effort. It's worth, it'd be worth somebody's time and effort. Um, to get in there and buzz stuff out. I don't think it's easy as those resistors You can go in there of course and start You know buzzing out the try to buzz out the traces, you know that one's still intact. You have to go systematically That one's still intact. So yeah, I think they're I think they're still going to be good. So why it's not Working, I don't know. There could be one somewhere. I haven't checked them all yet. I'd have to look for a service manual. Um, I could try and actually take the board out and look on the other side. I mean, it might have gotten down there. Might have gotten down through the vias and flippity doo da. Oh yeah. Oh no, no, that's I was gonna say I can see some liquid there. No, that's that's gotta be my that'd be my isopropyl. This area here. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, look, got its way to the other side as well. And um, even onto the switch contacts. Look at that. It's gotten through everywhere. Oh yeah. That's under the sponge there. Oh, come on. I don't see them, like, as I said, don't see them being hideously eaten away like you've seen in other videos. But that does take a long time. But, oh, geez, that's not good, is it? Maybe. But that's just like a button. Like, that's that's not going to stop the thing powering up and working. Oh, what? What's in there? Has that been completely eaten away? Oh, no. No, no, that's just a bit of solder mask. That's a bit, a bit of solder mask. It's got it over here too. What? Oh, that's terrible. Once again, the switches aren't really a problem. I have to look for a 3000 service manual. And hopefully we can get a, get a schematic out of it. I don't know. Like, is it? <laughs> Let me know in the comments down below. I'm not going to do this today. Rip. Fluke. Thank you. Energizer. Wow, 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 wow. Okay. <laughs> anyway, thoughts, comments, and prayers down below, please. Um, <laughs> Let me know what you think. Oh, poor thing. All right, I'm going to have to go through my box, which is literally, I'm, I'm not kidding. This is only, this is one of my boxes. This is a, look, it's a, it's a box of multimeters. It's a box of multimeters, right? <laughs> and that's just one of them. I got another box of multimeters at the uh, bunker as well. Um, I, I thought I systematically went through them, but anyway. Catch you next time. Hello.